Joining us now is ESPN boxing analyst Timothy Bradley on the phone. From my understanding, Timothy, you uh, had a very severe reaction to when you heard of Dadashev's death. This is a tragedy, I, you know, the story of Dadashev. Tragedy struck the boxing and sporting community today when fighter Maxim Dadashev passed away as a result of injuries. Mad Max, Maxim Dadashev uh, passed away. Subru Matias is a professional boxer from Puerto Rico. He gained attention for his impressive performances in the ring, showcasing his power and skill. However, his story took a tragic turn in 2019 when his opponent, Maxim Dadashev, suffered fatal injuries during their bouts. Matias was deeply affected by the tragedy and expressed remorse for what had happened. Matias was raised in Matalino, a poor seaside fishing community in Fajardo. He received support from his mother, grandmother, Viviana, and people close to the family. Such as his father Figo, Julio de Jesus, Matias developed an early interest in motorcycling and he was gifted two, a Harley Davidson and a Vespa. He was involved in the criminal activities as a youth, suffering a gunshot wound on August 10, 2012 and serving a 19-month term in prison. Afterward, Matias took up boxing as a career and signed as a professional in 2015. He credits these experiences with giving him a strong mind, showing him how to deal with adversity and providing the time to find himself and faith. Matias is married and has three daughters. Matias has held the IBF Junior Welterweight title since February 2023. As of February 2023, he is ranked as the world's fourth best active junior welterweight by the ring and seventh by the Transnational Boxing Rankings Board. Matias is known for his aggressive fighting style characterized by relentless pressure, powerful punches, and high work rate. He often overwhelms his opponents with his constant forward movement, throwing a barrage of punches to break down their defenses. Matias possesses significant punching power, especially with his left hook, and is capable of ending fights with knockout blows. He combines this power with good technical skills, making him a formidable opponent in the ring. After the tragedy that happened with Maxim Dadashev, Matias since then has continued his boxing career, aiming to honor Dadashev's memory while striving for success in the sport. He has had seven fights since then and has had only one loss. In all of the six fights, he has had one knockout and made the rest of his opponents quit. Matias lost to Petros Anania on February 22nd, 2020 by a unanimous decision. Although we shouldn't take anything from Anania's win, Subriel will be able to prove that this was definitely just a bad night at the office. In October 24, 2020, Matias moved past his worst night at the office by delivering arguably one of the best boxing performances of his young career. The hard-hitting junior welterweight broke down the previously unbeaten Malik Iceman Hawkins and wrote to the seventh round stoppage win. Matias scored the bout's lone knockdown in round six with the ringside doctor advising the referee that Hawkins was no longer able to continue before the start of round seven. In May 29, 2021, the merciless punching Puerto Rican picked up the biggest victory of his career so far, forcing Kazakhstan's Brazilian Jukmaviev to quit on his stool after eight brutal rounds in their IBF Junior Welterweight Eliminator. Matias scored a knockdown in round four and weathered several momentum shifts to force the opponent's stoppage in between rounds 8 and 9. Matias' pressure and power proved to be much for Jukmaviev to handle as his corner informed the referee that he was unable to continue. The heartbreaking moment 
left his opponent with his first loss. The prolific knockout artist was now in position to eventually challenge for the IBF welterweight title. On January 22, 2022, Matias will get his revenge against Petros Ananyan. The junior welterweight contender who lost a close unanimous decision to Ananyan in 2020 broke down and then stopped Ananyan after 9 rounds in their rematch. The fighters fought toe to toe from beginning to the end in another slug fest but Matias clearly landed more and harder punches than his rival. Ananyan began to slow down by the middle of the fight, at which time Matias had hard shots and then was taking a significant toll. The biggest punch of the fight came in round 9 when Matias landed a left hook in the final seconds that put Ananyan onto the canvas and hurt him. Ananyan was able to get up, however, the ring doctor who examined him after the round didn't like what he saw and he had to tell the referee to stop the fight. Matias was then ranked number two by the IBF and now had three consecutive fights since the loss to Ananyan. On February 25, 2023, Matias would face Jeremiah's Nicholas Pons. Pons got up with a blistering start by unloading various vicious shots to Matias' body and head as soon as the bell sounded to start the bout. Matias seemed stunned by Pons' work rate and had difficulty dealing with his opponent's activity and accuracy throughout those three minutes. Pons entered the ring ranked number one among the IBF's junior welterweight contenders. Matias was ranked second by the IBF while Pons overwhelmed Matias with pressure and punishing punches in the first round of their 140 bound title bout. But Matias withstood Pons' onslaught, traded power shirts with him for four more rounds and eventually encouraged Pons' handlers to stop the fantastic firefight following the fifth round. The Puerto Rican dropped Pons late in the fifth round and won the previously vacant IBF junior welterweight title by technical knockout. On November 24, 2023, Matias would face the dangerous Shogahun Egrashev. Egrashev knocked out 20 of his first 23 professional opponents and entered the ring undefeated. He had, however, never encountered a relentless wrecking ball like Subriu Matias. Egrashev seemed to fade during a one-sided fifth round just the way the previously unbeaten Argentinian Jermaine Pons did. The Puerto Rican knockout artist withstood a slow start, viciously assaulting Uzbekistan Egrashev for three plus rounds and forced Sugar Hill Stewart, the trainer of the mandatory challenger of his IBF junior welterweight title to stop their fight just as the sixth round was about to begin. Matias won by a technical knockout and retained his title. Considering the savage fighting style, frightening but yet fantastic performance of Subriu Matias, none of the top fighters in his weight class wants to fall victim to the Puerto Rican, especially remembering how he has literally made all his opponents quit. Now, Theofoma Lopez, for example, has talked, smacked, and dismissed Matias' skill. Sabrio Matias, no one knew about him until he started calling me out. He just do the facts. You know, he could be an IBF world champion, but he's the most softest fighter in the division. Why I say that? Because he's one-dimensional to the point where Puerto Ricans, man, I tear their butt up. Puerto Ricans are easy to beat, and I don't care if the Puerto Ricans feel some type of way. Put them in front of me, we beat them. But is yet to put his words to action. There could be several reasons why fighters may not want to face Sabriu Matias. He is indeed seen as a formidable opponent due to his skills, record, and style. Additionally, fighters want to avoid matchups if they perceive the risk of injury or a significant challenge outweighing the potential rewards. 
Matthias is an example of someone delivering the extreme and the worst thing that could happen in a combat sport. Rest in peace, Maxim Dudashev. But the fighters can only dock and hide for so long. Sooner or later, someone would have to be put to the test. First and foremost, I have the I have Egochev, who's that's who I'm supposed to fight. Mm. He touched something very personal. He said that for me to to say goodbye to my family because that was the last time I was going to see them. So first and foremost, I want to knock him out, and then I want to tell every single uh, world champion out there stop being chicken shits and and fight me. And and if Devin Haney's who wins, and that's what I want. I want the champions. I don't want people who don't have belts. Okay. Thank you, Sabrina. I appreciate it. Thank you.